Hello everybody. Today's video is not one that I wanted to make, but I have to. Let's not beat about the bush, you've read the title. Yes, it is true, I have sold my Lamborghini Gallardo. I feel very bad about this. I would not blame anybody who went, sod you JM, you liar, you told us you were going to keep this for ages, do loads to it, you're really happy about it and everything, we've been betrayed. You've done the typical YouTuber thing and that's exactly what you said you weren't going to do. And that's all very true. This is the second car in only the last few months I've sold, having said I want to keep it for quite some time after my BMW 130, which is also now gone. That has been replaced with something I think is actually far more interesting, but I don't know if you'll see this video first or the reveal of its replacement, so I won't yet tell you what it is. I have wanted a Gallardo for quite some time, and it is really, really upsetting to have to sell mine, but I genuinely believed there really wasn't an alternative, and so I hope I can now explain to you my reasoning, and I'm really hopeful that you'll understand what I did and why I did it. I have wanted a Gallardo for a very long time, and in all honesty, along with my car going, so has my chance really, I think, of owning one, because there isn't anything that I could get remotely close to it in good condition for the amount of money that I have. So for now, no Lamborghini for James. So what happened? And this is where YouTube time and real time probably confuse things a little bit, because it may seem like I've only had the car for like a few weeks. In actual fact, I've owned it nearly since the beginning of the year. It took probably more than a month or so between me actually pulling the trigger on buying it and you all finding out about it. So in total, my ownership was sort of between five and six months. Of that time, the car was actually only on my driveway for about two or three weeks. There were quite a few issues with the Gallardo, mostly concerning the suspension, and they took a long time to fix. That's why the car wasn't on my driveway until very recently. From the very first journey where I actually could bring it home in good weather, I wasn't very happy with it at all. The car was an absolute misery to drive for a couple of main reasons. First off, the seat unbelievably uncomfortable. Now you may all be thinking, but James, you've driven the car before, hadn't you noticed this? Well, yes, I had driven it and I had noticed that the seats weren't particularly comfortable, but the adjustment on them was broken. So I'd hoped that maybe once I actually could set them where I needed them to be, things would be a little bit better. Sadly, that was not to be the case. The other piece of the puzzle was the suspension. You see, it was ludicrously stiff, that car. We had just had all the bushings and things done, and they may have contributed to it slightly, but I don't think they were solely responsible. The car was horrible. It would just bounce all the way down the road, and that's no exaggeration. The thing was hopping all over the shop, and that meant if you tried to press on with it, it actually became pretty dangerous, because you'd be going around a bend, the car would hit a, a minor bump, and it would pretty much try and throw you off the road. So it was scary to drive. I mean, really, seriously terrifying. I investigated what might be the cause of this, and there were a few different possibilities. Like I said, the aforementioned bushings could maybe do with being replaced with softer items, but the simple fact was that the suspension on the car was either shot to hell and not working properly, or just horribly uncomfortable. Now, I do suspect that there was something wrong with my car because I don't ever remember a Gardo suspension being like that before, and I have driven a couple, and it was bad enough that I really would have noticed. The issue is that to try and replace it with OEM suspension is just silly, expensive, absolutely no point doing that whatsoever. And to try and replace it with aftermarket suspension was going to cost an awful lot of time and take a lot of money. Now, I was reasonably happy to do this because I'd made my promise to all of you that I was going to keep the car, I was going to do it up, I was going to try and make it a good car once more. However, I got in touch with the company that makes suspension for it and the money wasn't really the problem. I, I could afford it. The issue was time because everything at the minute is on about an eight week lead, which meant, practically speaking, it's probably going to be about three months before I could get the suspension on the car. Seats were a similar story and so you'd be looking at I'm sorry I had to put sunglasses on 
no, actually that's not even going to fix the problem. There we go. And so you were looking at, realistically, about three to four months and seven or eight thousand pounds to try and get this car to a state where I'd actually just be happy driving it at all. That's a lot of time and that's a lot of money, but I thought, you know, I'll persevere with it. And then, out of the blue, a man approached me and said, hey, is your Gallardo for sale? And of course, I said, no, what? Oh, there's a bird. But he inquired further and I said, look, you, the, the car needs a hell of a lot of work. This is not a car that is ready to go. And he said, no, no that's, that's, that's fine. That's, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And I said, well, yeah, okay, fine, sure, great. But, you know, I, I'd, I'd want reasonable money for the car. I'd want to try and recoup my investment. And he said, well, okay, well, well, how much is that? And I was like, well, the car owes me about 50,000 pounds as it stands. And he said, okay. But even still, I, I didn't say yes to him because a lot of people have helped me out with this car. And I feel very, very bad about just selling it without having consulted them first. Now, the first person I thought about was the man who had actually sold me the car originally because he'd done me a very good deal on it. Part of the reason for that being that, you know, I am who I am. And I said that I was going to do the car up. He was very chill with everything. That was good. The main person I wanted to speak to was Aldous AV Engineering because he's done a heck of a lot to that car at a very favourable rate, again, because it's me. So I, I popped and saw Aldous quickly and, and had a bit of a chat with him and, and he was very happy. He gave me his blessing, which was very important that I could sell the car. And then I started thinking, I still wasn't convinced that I wanted to do it, but my gut just said do it because I didn't enjoy driving the car. I took it on a, on a couple of slightly longer trips, you know, over 100 miles in, in a stretch, and I was in agony. I mean, absolute crippling agony. It was <laughs> not just no fun, but misery. And, and let's be honest here, a Lamborghini should be a smile machine. You should be able to take it down a road like this, grinning like a Cheshire cat and having the time of your life, as I am now. And this car is deeply flawed. You're going to see a review of it very soon. It's the new Huracan Evo rear-wheel drive. But on its day, in its moment, this thing is brilliant. My Gallardo was not. I'd really hoped when it came back that I'd be able to have a couple of months of just enjoying it, driving it around and, and having a bit of fun before I then did the, the meaty work of trying to restore it and fix it. And the simple fact was, that wasn't going to happen. I didn't like the car. It was going to then be at least three months and a lot of money to try and fix the issue with no guarantee that I actually would have fixed it at the end. So if this gentleman David bought the car, I would have been out of it with no loss of money. Whereas had I continued with it, poured another seven or eight grand into it and not fixed the problem, that seven or eight grand that I wouldn't have recouped, that would have just been lost money. And there was a fairly big philosophical issue at the heart of this internal debate that I was having. I want to be as transparent with all of you as I feel comfortable being. And I think, I like to think that I do a fairly reasonable job of it. I promised all of you, like I said, that this is a car I would keep, I would do stuff with, so on and so forth. But the brutal, honest truth of it was that I wasn't enjoying the car. And as far as I was concerned, my choice was, do I try and keep my promise, do up the car and all that jazz, but in the process, probably wind up lying as to how I felt about it, or... Do I do what in my mind is the right thing? Do I just be honest with all of you? I had a whole bunch of cars on the driveway and the Lamborghini keys were the last ones I ever would have reached for. I would rather take out the Volvo V60, all right, it's Polestar engineered, that I had on the driveway than the Lambo. I've driven loads of other cars since then that cost a fraction of what that did, that I enjoyed a lot more. And on this channel, one of the things I'm really passionate about is telling people that you need to buy and spend your money on something that makes you happy. Not just something that you can show off to other people, you know, that you can tell everyone how great you are, but for something that really, genuinely you want, you are passionate about. And the Gardo wasn't that car. So, it's gone. I'm very, 
very sorry about it. I, I, I'm sorry to Aldous for it, I'm sorry to the guy that sold it to me, and I'm sorry to all of you, because this is content you're now not going to get. I hope to be able to revisit the car in the near future, and more Lamborghini content will be coming, as you probably guessed by the fact that I'm driving this around, up in beautiful Scotland. What's next for me then? Well, that's the really tricky one because genuinely, I don't actually know. There's a lot of ways that I could go with this. I've sold the car and I've, I've got my money. Oh, and um, there is a little bonus too. Because the guy wanted to come and pick it up on a Sunday and he works in the motor trade, rather than getting the train down or a hire car or something like that, he brought down a whole car and left it on my driveway. So I got for my Lamborghini, honestly, a Nissan Micra and £50,000 but also a Nissan Micra so if you want to see any content with that on the channel and in fact I'm, I'm pretty sure I want to make some do let me know forever worried about bottoming this thing out I tell you because it's, it's very low oh, uh, these roads are very bumpy so <laughs> that is um, oh my word these roads have gotten a lot worse I swear so there's a few different thoughts swirling my head as to what I do, but of course, being a YouTuber, they're gonna be separate videos. I genuinely, at this point in time, do not know what it is that's gonna happen next. There's a, a supercar-shaped hole on the driveway, and whether I even get another supercar, I don't know, because I've decided now that whatever comes next has to be something I'm really, really quite passionate about, and I'm gonna derive a lot of pleasure from. So thanks for watching this video. Thank you for your understanding. Please like, comment down below, tell me what you think, be honest. Subscribe if you haven't already, although it's not really the kind of video that makes people subscribe, I suppose, and um, I shall see you all for the next one. There will be another Lamborghini on my driveway at some point, of that I can assure you. When it will happen, I don't know. I think it's gonna be some time because the Lamborghini I really, really want, that's got a V12 in it. They're not cheap. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like. See you soon. Bye-bye.